Hi, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. So today is Friday, uh, unfortunately Friday the 13th, but you know, so far so good in terms of the, the way the market moves. And uh, today is our favorite, the Primary Vision Forex spread count. So before we get started, we'd like to remind you, please like, share, subscribe. Your, your uh, support is always appreciated. We love the comments. We've gotten some great ones so far in the economy show. The EIA show is up today. It was uh, just a little late with uploads and all that fun stuff with the delays in, uh, in reporting. But now that we're, uh, we've are we covered all the bases, time to get to it. And we had a nice little increase of 15. So we went from 115 to 130 for the current frac spread count. Now, for those that read the report that we put out uh, last week and just from last week's show, we were talking about how there are a lot of uh, some short-term impacts that come in within this number. So when we look at it from the perspective of last week, we had weather adjustments which have now uh, that have now passed. You know, five spreads went off. They came back on within the Permian. So that's not that's not uh, unsurprising for the most part. And then the difference really comes from some of the other uh, smaller basins, with the biggest one really being Denver, seeing the biggest uh, uh, increase. Now, you know, as we've talked about over time, and and for those that have gotten used to the shows, we keep going back to some of these smaller basins where we'll get one-offs, where we might get one, two, maybe even three spreads getting activated, completing work, and then going back and, um, you know, turning off again. And the reason really is now we're at November 13th, we really need to focus on, okay, well, where are we going to go into year end? And a lot of these, these different activities really kind of focused on making sure that there's enough supply and there's enough production to get into the end of the year and then you know building into that, um, that Q1 2021. So when we look at the, uh, the last three months, and you can kind of see, obviously, the, the trend is up. And we're right back, you know, we peaked at about 134, then we started to slow down. Now we're, you know, right back to where we were. And we have to look at, you know, what is happening over time. Like weather's gotten better. We have a a renewed focus in some of the smaller basins on bridging the, the gap in terms of decline curves. But there's obviously more risk at hand. There's a lot of things that are happening. You know, we did have crude prices rally on Monday from the Pfizer news. And there's there, there those are some positives that are coming in, which is getting some activity there. You know, obviously we've had the rig count, you know, it's up again 10 today uh, on the oil side and seven of which was in the Permian. So as we keep talking about, the Permian is going to see the most opportunity is going to see the most activity and Texas in general. So again, some of those one-offs, they'll come on, they'll fall off. But as we keep going through, we can, you know, the Permian, Appalachia, Texas in general is going to be and remain that stalwart as we go through with the Permian and Texas in general seeing the most growth. You know, some things to keep in mind as we look out, you know, we're 25 days to the Electoral College Safe Harbor date, uh, 28 days to the government shutdown, 48 days to the unemployment uh, fiscal cliff, and uh, and then 68 days to the president's uh, new president's inauguration. You know, all of these things, but obviously the market doesn't like volatility and we just go up, but it, these are things that could, could become bigger issues as we go forward. As we talked about in the economy show, with small businesses and some of the impacts. And then we've had some new data that's come out, which we'll, we'll talk about just, you know, it, it, we have some charts already and we'll save them for next week, you know, just in terms of things that are coming down the pipe. So before we get into that, uh, let's look at where we were versus 2019. So clearly, you know, we're obviously on a mark shift lower, but the slope continues to grind higher. You know, West Africa, specifically Nigeria, has been struggling to sell cargo. Uh, this, you know, they're going, it's going fairly slow for what they would like. Uh, Angola's quite the opposite, where they they only have about 10% of their um, of their book left to sell, which is a pretty strong given where we are today. But again, we've always talked about that West African is going, uh, West African crude is really going to be driven by Nigeria. And the reason why I'm saying that right now while looking at the frac spread count is really because West Africa, specifically Nigeria, competes into Europe. You know, Europe is already struggling to sell their own crude coming out of the North Sea, Norway, as Libya is now at about, uh, I think, 1.2 million barrels a day is where they're currently sitting. 
And as we talked about in, uh, in part one of the econ show, and then again in part three of the EIA show, this is really where we're, we're seeing a lot of pressures really in Europe in terms of getting that crude in there. You know, we do have more crude heading into uh, China. You know, the numbers right now, and we'll have the chart for next week, but that right now there's 103, I'm sorry, 102 tankers, super tankers, uh, you know, signal, signaling China. And just an update, because we talked about the uh, Shandong port oil stockpiles, they actually are now up. So we, when we reported it, they were at about 43 million. And right now they're at 46.5 million, while fuel oil uh, inventories remain at, um, at seasonally adjusted you know, highs and the, really the highs that we've seen back through May and June. So these are some issues, and especially as, and we'll show the economic activity uh, updated chart next week, you know, we have France, Germany, uh, Italy, Spain, all slowing down. So when we look at the U.S. activity, we have to consider where is this going to go? Where is this crude going to? And at this point, it's really going to be sitting in terms of what are the refiners going to do? We think that they're going to increase about five percentage points over the next six weeks. And we'll see, uh, you know, more going into storage, but at the same time, what is the decline curve? You know, where are the declines are? You know, our expectation was to have an exit rate of 10.5 to 10.7 million barrels a day. Right now, based on loose estimates, if you would want to take EIA, some of the others, we're anywhere between 10.9 and 11.1. So this is also bridging some of that gap because as we keep saying, the goal is to get to Q3 of next year. So try to mitigate some of this the decline in um, in in production just because Q3 is expected to be better where we will most likely or hopefully have a vaccine. It'll be disseminated to such a point where some confidence will return to the market. People will get more active. But again, we obviously question some of those, those fundamentals as we look at uh, economic data, some of the pressures that we see on a an, on an, uh, global macro level that we've been talking to and, and really kind of tracking all through 2019. But again, we are going to see activity go higher. It'll it'll come from different areas. So the Permian, you know, we're, we're expecting another call three to five. Uh, some of the, um, uh, or, you know, I should say three to five over the next six weeks or so. We will see some of the, uh, some slowdowns in some of like Arcoma, Ardmore, Denver will start to slow down after uh, a week or two. And then we'll see some pickup in the, the Haynesville. We had a, a little bit in Appalachia. Again, those will come and go. So we're going to stay within this range, but it, again, it'll, it'll continue to drift higher with the support of Texas, Appalachia, Haynesville, and Eagleford activity, which is going to kind of keep us, you know, let, let's call it with a target of something closer to 137, 140. 40 as we head into the end of the year. And then it'll be interesting to see how Thanksgiving into uh, Christmas goes, because typically we have seasonality come in, we have seasonality taking us down, but just because this is such a unique year, and clearly we're already well off of where we were in 2019, that'll be a hindrance in terms of kind of how far do we really drop. And that's why we think that we're going to see a little bit more activity, but again, not any kind of real shock to the upside. So thanks again for watching. You know, we had a busy week. We had uh, the EIA show, which came out uh, today. We had the Econ show, which came out uh, yesterday. You know, selfishly, I'm very proud of the uh, China show. I think it came out well. Uh, we, we have a, a bigger report. Uh, I was hoping to have it done by today. It's going to come out next week now, where we're, where we're really going deep into what is happening in China, what does it mean for the global um, economy, what does it mean for the U.S., and then what is happening with a potential Biden's, uh, Biden presidency, or at least now based on some of the headlines, you know, something that is fairly confident based on some of the... Um, uh, lawsuits getting thrown out or rejected. And now it's just going to be a matter of what happens next. When we start looking about the transition, what does that transition look like? What does foreign policy look like? And then more importantly, what's going to happen in energy for those that are watching this show. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you have a great weekend, have a lot planned before the cold sets in. So again, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings coming to you from Primary Region Network. <laughs>